News, Taiwan and the world. Good afternoon. It's four o'clock. I'm Eric Gao with the top of the hour news. In Taiwan News, the Ministry of Labor says that all sides will be represented at upcoming basic wage review meeting. The review commission is set to sit down on the 16th to decide whether to raise the current minimum wage and if so, by how much. The ministry says that it will make sure that representatives from both labor and employers are there to speak for their sides. The MOL adds that it will hold meetings with the two sides separately in the days leading up to the review session. The ministry is aiming to avoid a repeat of a similar meeting two years ago where employer envoys boycotted the session. It may come as no surprise that students from families living in urban areas are more likely to enter the best university. According to the College Entrance Examination Center's data, National Taiwan University has filled all of its 1,670 freshman spaces for the upcoming school year via entrance exams. NTU official Ling Hong Sun says 86% of their new students are from the six special municipalities and a little over half of them live in Taipei and New Taipei. Lee says that his school accepts some 3,700 undergraduates a year via various channels, and an average 56% of these students graduated from the top 10 high schools island-wide. The CEEC announced the results of last month's college entrance exam earlier today, saying that of the 44,000 high school graduates who opted to take the exam, 91% were admitted to university. The CDC says deaths caused by severe enterovirus infection has hit a six-year high. The Centers for Disease Control says two new cases of severe enterovirus infection were recorded last week as well. One of the patients, a six-day-old infant, was confirmed to be infected with EV type 11 with severe complications and died of multiple organ failure. According to CDC data, Taiwan has seen 23 cases of severe enterovirus infections so far this year, with seven cases resulting in death. Experts say many of these cases involve newly born infants, and they are advising parents to wash their hands thoroughly and to cut back on unnecessary visits. In world news, Malaysia's new government has shut down a Saudi-backed anti-terrorism center just over a year after it was launched by the Saudi king during a visit. Defense Minister Mohamed Sabu says that the King Salman Center for International Peace will cease operations immediately and that its functions will be absorbed by the Malaysian Institute of Defense and Security. He did not give a reason for the closure. The center aimed to draw Islamic scholars to combat extremist views and promote tolerance. It had a temporary office in Kuala Lumpur while awaiting the construction of a permanent building in Malaysia's administrative capital. Opposition lawmaker Ms. Muddin Hussein, who was formerly defense minister, says that the move to close the center is a loss to the nation amid growing terrorism in the Muslim world. He says the center was aimed at putting predominantly Mala uh, Muslim Malaysia at the forefront of the fight against violent extremism and ideologies together with Saudi Arabia. A string of Taliban attacks in western and eastern Afghanistan have left at least 12 people dead, including four women who died in a crossfire during a shootout between insurgents and the military. In western Farah province, the Taliban attacked a military checkpoint, killing four troops and wounding six. The provincial government says the Afghan Air Force was called in, and airstrikes later killed 19 Taliban fighters and wounded 30. A government spokesman says the Taliban have been pushed back, and the situation is now under control. In eastern Logar province, four women were killed and four children were wounded in the crossfire during a shootout between insurgents and the military. This fighting took place near the provincial capital, and the provincial council says an investigation is underway to determine which side caused the civilian casualties. Separately, the Taliban attacked a police checkpoint in eastern Ghazni province, killing four policemen and wounding five. An Australian state has reported its first case of a superbug in a hospital patient who likely picked up the drug-resistant fungus in Britain. A health official in Victoria State says health personnel are taking a search-and-destroy approach to ensure that the Candida auris fungus does not spread. The fungus was first identified in Japan in 2009. It has since spread to more than a dozen countries, including the U.S., where it has become a menace in hospitals. Taiwan weather. According to Central Weather Bureau forecasters, we will continue to see sunny skies in the north and east for the rest of the afternoon, though the south and center may see some thunder showers. This evening, similar conditions, though the thunder showers should recede to just rain. Overnight lows will be 25 to 27.
Right now, it's 35 in Taipei, 32 in Taizong, 32 in Hualien, and 33 degrees in Kaohsiung. That's the ICRT News at 4. I'm Eric Gao. 以上ICRT整点新闻是由华南金控独家赞助，并持初衷努力不懈，在坚持。Hey all. Let me just get myself in here. You're watching. Excuse me. Leslie is failing at doing whatever needs to be done to get him in the video. Shut up, Eric. Your viewer. Okay, adding you now. Hi, Sun Yu Chan, Irene. Hello, hello. We've got 31 people watching right now. Just keep saying hi. Uh, Leslie says, I need to just keep saying hi until he figures out how to get his, how to join us on this live stream. How are y'all doing? It is Tuesday. It is actually quite nice today here in Taipei. It's quite sunny out. Yeah, no, yeah, we got, no, no. Uh, hello once again. This is Eric Gao with your ICRT News at four. I, I can time. I just... I... Rescue me, Leslie. Help me. Yo, you are the professional here, man. I mean, I professional. Uh, still not showing up. Still nothing. Still nothing. Okay. Well, as we figure this out, let's this try again. Ongoing. All right, then. You know what? Forget it. I will be figuring out. I will be the You'll, voice behind it. All right, the, he's um, just going to be watching from over there. Yeah, I'll be the voice behind it. So let's talk about the two stories that, uh, that we're going to talk about today, um, which here. are the... Brain, Wayson. Hello, hello. Right, so uh, the two stories that we want to focus on today, one is the minimum wage story that I just spoke about. Right. So they're going to hold the minimum wage review committee meeting on the 16th of this month. Are you sure? So that's uh, just about a week and a half away. So this is a fairly regular thing that they do. I think they do this every year. Yeah. And then they decide. They based, have to, right? Based on uh, current economic conditions and uh, inflation and things like that, they decide whether or not they're going to raise the minimum wage. It was actually raised at the beginning of this year on 20, uh, 2018, January 1st. So the minimum wage as it stands right now is at 22,000 NT a month for monthly salaries. And it is uh, 140 NT an hour for people who get paid by the hours. Is that, sure. is that me? Can I? Then we add... Add, adding, adding. Yes. Hi, Kevin. Does Are you say in? something about me? Does not. Are you being kicked out? Oh, wait, shoot. Could you do that again? Ah. Sorry, it just... Bah. You declined. How about now? Adding. There we go. Yes. Okay, adding. great. Great. Rotate your phone to be horizontal. Yes. Okay. There we go. Great. Right. Now it's, it's a not party. just me. Excellent. Okay. Now you have two lovely faces to stare at. Well, you know, people would probably or, prefer Nancy's. Know, I'm just saying. Us two together. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about the wage. Um, they adjust the wage every year. Uh, they hold the committee meeting every year. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily change the minimum wage. Oh, really? I thought it was. Year. I thought it was a mandatory raise. Uh, no, it's based on economic conditions and things like that. So if they think that inflation's uh, under control, they might not raise it. What would we, I die? Uh, inflation under control? Uh, I mean, uh, it's, okay, so what's I'm what, sure they have formulas and they talk about it. So it's not so it's not as simple as just yes, let's raise it every year. Yeah. So last week, me and Nancy talked about how the minimum wage right now is twenty two thousand a month. Yes, twenty two thousand and nine NT a month. Right. It's right. not flat, but and yeah. then um. What's this she say? She's also said, but we also said that we had a workers union say that it should be 28,000. 28,862 NT a month or 164 NT an hour. Yeah. That is based on figures from the Organization for Economic Development. Mm -hmm. uh, their standard for a low salary is two thirds of the median yeah. salary. So, so of the median salary. Okay. So currently, the minimum wage is even below the OECD's low salary definition. What's the OECD? Organization for Economic Development. Okay. And yeah. So, so they say, based on that standard, it should be 
twenty-eight thousand, almost twenty-nine thousand a right. month. Right. Right. And this is the this is an ongoing uh, issue where the government's trying to raise it to thirty thousand. They can say it whenever they want, but whenever the meeting time comes around, I know like last last year it went from twenty-one thousand to twenty-two thousand, and, and people like are just like, oh, great. And in response to that call for the twenty-eight thousand, twenty-nine thousand figure, yeah. uh, companies came out and said it's too high already. We can't. We're already really? struggling under the current, under the current wages. We can't afford to raise it even further. What companies? What company? Like any notable companies that said? That uh, said no, this? just like uh, business representatives. Okay. So it wasn't any one company saying this, but it's that is the feeling amongst are they many really com- struggling though? Well, remember uh, the major, the vast majority of Taiwan's employers are actually small and medium enterprises. Right. We have a couple okay. really big ones. Yeah. Like TSMC and everything like that. Yes. But they do not employ the majority of Taiwan's workers. Okay, fair. Right. So, sure, they might be making hundreds of millions. Right. But when it comes to just like, you know, the mom and pop store down the street, mm-hmm. can they really afford to pay their workers, each worker, another 10,000 NT a month? Is if, it, would it be 10,000 NT a month? If we were going by the 3,000 NT. 30,000 uh, 30, 30, 30, NT. That would standard. be like an extra 8,000. I mean, yeah, but for I guess. each employee, right? You probably have two or three for just like a normal shift uh-huh. uh, throughout the day. And then that's for one position, maybe. Right. Do we have anybody so, saying anything about the minimum wage right uh, now? No, we just got a lot of thumbs up so far. Okay, so that's if very you guys good. have anything that you want to weigh in on here, please please let us know. So, and then what's what's hourly range now? Hourly is currently sitting at 140 NT an hour. Okay. Which at least is enough to buy a uh, a value meal at most fast food restaurants. Are you talking about the, fa- the no, fast food I, restaurant? I, I, I remember that when I first moved back to Taiwan, mm-hmm. the hourly wage at that point was not enough to buy a, a value meal. It well, is we're talking about when you moved back like 10 years ago. Right. But I mean, the, va- the cost was still higher. Yeah, the, the cost hasn't changed too much for a value meal over the years, mm-hmm. but the minimum wage. Has. Are you sure they've been raising them? Prices have been been raised pretty rigorously over the past few years. I gotta say. Yes, but at least the minimum wage is climbing faster than that, in this regard. For like, okay. for the Big Mac standard, let's say. Okay. It's climbing faster than that. Right, and and the Big uh, Mac over standard over twenty years. I'm, Big so, Mac standard for those of you who don't know, it's just um, our hourly wage is able to keep up with the price of a Big Mac. Right. Or, I mean, or basically, like, how many Big no, Macs can you buy for an hourly wage? No person should just be eating Big Macs, though. Uh, Wanny is asking, could it be because tax is too high? Taiwan taxes are actually some of the lowest in the world. Especially when it especially comes to for income tax. Income tax. However, that's only for the middle, middle and lower brackets. Right. I got to say. But if um, you're earning minimum wage, then obviously you're in the lowest you bracket. You want low, low tax brackets. It's, it's, I think it's really low. It's not like America where the income tax across the board is just – terrifying right it's about like 40 percent in america <sighs> here if the, the the most basic or the lowest income tax is about five percent right and that's not even counting the uh the basic deduction that everybody gets right so i think if you're earning minimum wage you're not paying too much in taxes at least in income taxes yeah let's, let's be clear about that you're not paying too much in the way of income taxes but to begin with as soon as you're at like a higher bracket that's when you just start seeing like increased well, taxes then, i think after the five you go up to 15 percent, which is not skyrocketing yeah it's right? not terribly it's not huge terrible. but it's still substantial yeah um i mean a 10 percent increase is anything but is it a tax issue i don't think so. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't say coming so. back from the states. I'll tell you that Taiwan probably has a more lenient tax policy. Yes, that I would believe definitely. than where I've been, which is the states where we've been at least. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Where? So when is this meeting going to take place? On the sixteenth. So okay. I think that's next. Wednesday. On the sixteenth. And is this when they're going to make an official adjustment or whatever? Uh, or are they they're going to sit down. Plans? There's supposed to be representatives from the government, representatives from labor unions, okay. representatives from business business groups and they're supposed to sit down and decide if a a wage increase is called for and if so how much and then if if they do decide they will say like it's going to start on x date and this year it was Mm -hmm. january 1st so i'm assuming if they do it again does it happen the same same time time every year i believe so because it feels like uh like two years ago and between the adjustment two years ago and the last year's adjustment, it was very close together. That's what I felt like. I think they have uh, 
they haven't been coming like the meetings haven't been coming more often yeah but i think that uh the increases have been coming more often okay. so like each year uh, in recent years at least there has been some sort of increase no matter how much how much or how little and this one's for the ministry of labor right yes. like this is this is a man ministry of labor mandate this is meeting. this is not in like economics ministry this Whom is the ministry from of... the government will be representing is is the president the no, president no, no. the president does not go to these kind of meetings uh do you think she should she has a lot on her plate uh technically mm -hmm. from what i understand yeah. of the Taiwan Constitution, the president is responsible for things like national defense and diplomacy and things that deal with other countries. So right. technically, I believe it would be the premier's job who is responsible for more like interior stuff okay. to go to this. I don't so, think the premier himself attends. I think it's probably going to be like National Development Council, Ministry of Labor. Uh, interior, what about the Minister of the Interior? Minister of the Interior? I don't know. No? I, think this I, I don't think I've ever seen a list of this who has be something he attends. Okay. So let's bring it back to another thing where the administration now, they said they want a 30,000 a month. That is an ambitious target. But how, over, over a period of how long? Well, we would have to assume that if she, uh, President Tsai were to get a second term yeah. across the eight years that she's in power. Okay. I, I, I honestly can't remember if she gave a, uh, a timeline for when she would like to see this. I don't again. think so. I don't think so because that's... Because if you say that and you don't hit it, then you're in really big political Stuff trouble. like this is really tricky, right? It is. Because you it can't is. realize, you, can, you got to realize that if you increase everybody's wage, that means everything else is going to. The inflation inflate, and then right? also people are going to lose their jobs because employers cannot afford to keep as many employees. But at the same time, you got to realize this does come with certain benefits. And yes, you've you got more purchasing power, but then it kind of evens itself out. But everybody the has the rise. same purchasing power, right? right? So. It's like that thing. It's like um, what's the example I was gonna use? It's like um, the the labor law, the the really controversial labor law, like the, the can't the day off. Yeah, the days off. Yeah. yeah. So what happens was like we you have a lot of these businesses complaining that like it's really inconvenient and uh, so management doesn't know it's not flexible. Yeah. But at the same time, you see that it actually increased job rates, right? It, it increased right because the uh, if the you can't rate. have people work overtime, then you, you have need no choice but to get employees different to people. fill up the time. And I think that that was a good thing. I'm just from from, a, from uh, an employment market perspective yes because mm -hmm. more people are working more people are making money yeah but from the employer's perspective no because now they have to hire more people to do the same amount of work yeah and then it's not just like the wages because then you also have the insurance that you need to pay right you, you got labor insurance you got medical insurance things right. like that so there are other costs associated with hiring a new person than just mm -hmm. asking the same person to do extra hours and pay them overtime naturally okay so it's these things are never simple guys um, that's that's the truth of the Were world. employer envoys boycotted this session like two years ago. Two years ago. This was basically when uh, the side administration was first doing this, like, uh, show thing. Mm -hmm. Right? So they were, say, they were complaining that uh, too inflexible, and they, didn't, uh, they want some national holidays cut from the schedule so they don't have to pay uh, right. holiday rates for those days. They also thought that the employees were asking for too Here's large a raise. Here's my question. Yes, Leslie. Is the pilots union going to be there? Probably not, but I, I'm sure that this they have topic... Their, they have their concerns of their own. Yeah, this sure. topic might be uh, of interest. Okay, when, when let's move on down. to international news. That was the lay away up. The wage law, <laughs> the minimum, minimum wage, wage meeting, basic that's wage take is care. actually called here. What is it, the 16th next week? 16th. That's going to happen, so we're going to know if... Uh, Taiwan's gonna eighth, get a minimum uh, wage. the seventh. Like I told, so, I told Nancy Friday next that week? I told Nancy that every time these things happen, people get really riled up about like, oh yeah, it should be this, it should be that, it should be this, it should be that, and then a whole bunch of people like set these high targets. But when push comes to shove and they have the meeting, it's not. It's so, incremental. So when it best. went up a thousand last year, mm -hmm. that was already pretty impressive. That's like significantly if you think about like percentage terms. Yeah, that's like a five fairly percent. High. Five percent, uh, less than that, but yeah, any any like four percent is is pretty high. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to international news. So, what's going on in Australia with this superbug? Right. So, for those of you who are not aware, a superbug is a a virus or bacterium that is 
highly resistant to uh, traditional medicines that we use. Right. Uh, Timothy says they could localize it, let each county and city adjust based upon their cost of living. That is what America does. Uh, by state. Yes, by and state. Then, and then there's uh, a federal minimum wage, but there's, there's a, a federal state minimum state, wage. And then some cities then there's are a introducing. City minimum, there's a county minimum wage, and then there's a city minimum wage. Uh, yes, they could do that. I'm sure. I don't. I don't know if any laws in Taiwan would prevent that. As is, uh, that would probably be. Yeah, you'd have to break it down to. Man, that yeah, I'm not. Be... I'm not sure of the dis- division of power between local and uh, central. Central but government then, but laws. You know what? That is. That is what they do because, like, in I want to say the federal minimum wage in America right now is about eight dollars an hour, or yeah. if that's seven twenty-five. But is the min- I think so. But the minimum wage in San Francisco is like fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, they because- just I think San Francisco and Seattle yeah. are the ones who raised it to fifteen dollars recently. Because living there is just so expensive, yeah. right? And even if we you think Taipei is expensive, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Taipei is pretty expensive. But Taipei San Francisco, Seattle. But yeah, like fifteen dollars an hour. You think, wow, that's amazing. That's like what, uh, bah, 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 bah. 500 NT an hour. Mm-hmm. That seems like a lot, but at the same time, that's not going to get you anything in San Francisco. Yeah. So, but then you also have the people who complain, like, because minimum wage is basically for unskilled labor. Yeah. But then you have people like uh, medical personnel who don't make that much. Yeah. And they're saying like, how come, uh, you know, this uneducated person doing a minimum wage job now deserves to have as much as I do? I'm not saying he deserves to have that as well, much. That's as what they're saying. Yeah. The, with the 15 because they were basically making $15 before mm-hmm. and now with the new minimum wage okay they're getting the same as All everyone right. else let's move on to Australia right now Australia right. yeah so superbug mm-hmm. rewind uh, this is a bacterium or a virus that is okay it can't be a virus because antibiotics don't work on viruses right uh, so bacterium or in this case a fungus that is resistant to most commonly used uh, antibiotics so most medical treatments Doesn't so work. Yeah, they just straight up don't work. The, bu- the bugs are resistant to them, to multiple types of, uh, of medicines. Okay. So in this case, it is a, a, virus, a fungus called Candida auris, which was first discovered in Japan in 2009. Apparently, and it's spread to Australia. It has spread uh, most recently to Australia. What are the symptoms? It's been seen in... Uh, in the U.S., it's been seen in Europe. Symptoms, it causes, it's basically a yeast infection. Mm-hmm. So for ladies, it can affect certain parts. Uh-huh. Uh, it can also affect the mouth and tongue. And uh-huh. in serious cases, it can travel through the bloodstream and start infecting uh, vital organs. like. Does uh, this kidneys. result in fatality? It can, actually, yes. Okay. And I actually, people. I understand that if in serious cases, it is it has a pretty high death rate. Oh, wow. A, basically, it is um, resistant to uh, medicine, so it's very difficult to treat. Mm-hmm. And also, most people who catch it, catch it in hospital. And if you're in a hospital, you probably have a weakened immune system already yeah. because okay. you're either sick from something else or you're injured. Contagious? Uh, it is. Uh, obviously, it does spread. Though I understand the person that they found in Australia, he has it, but he's not infected by it, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. So it might be like on the surface. It might he's be a carrier. Like on, yeah, he's a carrier. It's right. on his skin, but it's not like in his bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it can also spread that way. Uh, is there, there? So what, what's what's going to happen, man? Like this is—is is this going to be an epidemic? What's going on? Hopefully not. Uh, so far, there hasn't been any large scale uh, from Who's... bugs. No, from fungus, Wanny. It's from a. F- this particular uh, thing is a fungus. A uh, the drug resistance strain was actually found in 2016 uh-huh. here in southeast asia whereabouts uh, i i didn't see that information okay. unfortunately uh there was a big outbreak in london also that same year uh, and by this point there are some 200 cases total in the uk mm. and apparently they've been uh this fungus has been recorded in some 200 hospitals in how the has UK. it been transmitted uh in hospital just basically you're near other people who already have it Okay. Or I guess health professionals can also, I guess, bring it between hospitals. Okay. Uh, there have been 77 cases in the U.S. to date, mostly in the states of New York and New Jersey. Great. I used to live in New York. Okay. Yeah. So I might have it, Eric. So this, I think, is of particular interest here in Taiwan, where thanks to our national health insurance system, mm. uh, many people do go to the doctor and get medicines. And 
doctors here in Taiwan do tend to be very free with the antibiotics. Liberal. That they dis- very liberal. liberal. Open-handed, generous yes. with the antibiotics they prescribe to uh, to patients. Mm-hmm. And if patients don't finish the full course, which is... Often. Quite often, because you, you have, start feeling better and you just yeah, forget to take your medicine, right? I have a lot of medicines lying around So, like, you might be better, but that germ has survived, right? right? Your antibiotics didn't kill it off entirely because you didn't finish the full course. Okay. And now, if it survives, it becomes a little bit more resistant to the medicine and you pass it on. And eventually, you get these superbugs that are resistant to multiple different medicines and again this is mostly dangerous for people with weakened immune systems to begin with and here in taiwan with our aging population yeah that actually is a significant significant portion of the uh of the taiwan so last story there is a a fungus going around it's infecting people it's making people sick and it's very resistant to modern medicine yeah that's basically it scary stuff there's not much we can do about it i guess disinfectants could work so yeah. if you have to go to a hospital wash up wash up yeah. you know use all your those alcohol sprays and everything mm-hmm. just make sure that you don't uh don't bring anything home with you basically. okay cool all right and that's gonna wrap that's it up for today guys uh, thank anything you anything closing remarks anything uh no it was just Wanny asking about the bug all right slash well bacteria thank you, everybody. Fungus. Uh, we'll be back on thursday and hopefully nancy will be here sorry eric had to sit in for nancy today because nancy was busy with a station tour yeah we had uh students in here you guys probably heard them over with joey on the air and you right could see the you could see the station tour on instagram which is the one i handle mm-hmm. and i instagram is instagram.com slash icrt radio of course, we have a Facebook page, which you are obviously watching the Facebook stream on right now. So thank you for that, for liking us. If you haven't liked us, please do. And uh, Eric, close the show, please. Ciao. See you guys later. Bye-bye.